Thank you. Okay, so uh, I will continue the uh, survey of uh, uh, EFT examples before the break, and then after the break, I will uh, talk a little bit about the uh, SMEF. Uh, so the next uh, example I wanted to uh, to discuss here is uh, something that is uh, called uh, GR EFT. So uh, we have the, uh, so just, just like a, uh, we, uh, yesterday, we discussed the effective theory of uh, a massless spin one degree of freedom, also known as the, the photon. And we could see that you can define the theory and you can actually draw some interesting uh, consequences yeah, from the very general EFT discussion in particular about some, such phenomena like uh, vacuum uh, by refringence. Uh, let me just uh, shortly mention yeah, that you can do the same for uh, and for the other uh, massless uh, uh, particle in nature, which is the graviton. The only difference yeah, between those two theories yeah, is that in for the graviton we deal with spin uh, two. Yeah, so uh, th that introduces some technical differences, but the philosophy is uh, very much the same. Yeah? So we can. Um, for the for the graviton, yeah, we we have this uh, degree of freedom, yeah, that is uh, called uh, the, 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 the degrees of freedom of the of the massless graviton will be encoded in the metric, uh, and what I will use here, yeah, I will always expand uh, this metric around the flat Minkowski space time. Uh -huh. So uh, this is the this is the usual mean uh, diagonal mean Minkowski metric, and this. Uh, here is a Planck scale, uh, and uh, here is the, uh, the, the uh, symmetric tensor that describes uh, the graviton. So uh, we can build the, the Lagrangian now. Yeah, so it will be some expansion. Yeah, that will. Uh, lambda equals d equals two plus lambda d equals. Six and so on. Yeah? So I will explain you why there, there is uh, why there is this gap. Um, so the just like for the photon, yeah, we needed uh, to impose one important rule on this Lagrangian, which was the gauge symmetry. This is the same thing for for the graviton. Yeah, for the graviton, yeah, we have a uh, it, it is described by um, symmetric tensor with two, this, this the one, this thing with two indices. So this has 10 components, yeah? But we know that the graviton has only two components, yeah? So by itself, this contains a lot of uh, garbage, yeah? Which you have to uh, get rid of. And the way to get rid of it is to impose, again, gauge symmetry, which is called general coordinate invariance, yeah? So if you impose the general coordinate invariance, yeah, you ensure that there is only this two um, propagating degrees of freedom. So general coordinate invariance is just like, uh, uh, gauge symmetry for 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 the photon. Yeah, it just gets rid of the uh, this excess uh, degrees of freedom and allows you to describe only uh, physical degrees of freedom. So each term in this expansion will have to be general. Uh, I would just I would not, will not say general coordinate invariant because I will break my tongue. So gr invariant will be uh, the code name for that symmetry. Uh, good. Yes. Yeah, so the f uh, the first term that you could write, yeah, is uh, is the following, yeah, so it could be, so metric is dimensionless, yeah, so this has, it could be just a constant. And unlike in non-gravitational theories, yeah, it's not completely constant, yeah, because you have to add this uh, square root of G, yeah, here, so it has some effect, but we will not write it down, because if you, if you write it down, to, uh, then the uh, flat metric will not be a solution of the equations of motions, yeah, so, so the, of, of the vacuum equations, so then you will, not be able to expand around the flat metric. So you can do this, but I will, I will be, like without further explanation, I will just set this cosmological constant to zero. And yeah, I'll just, you can, as an exercise, you can uh, propose how to do it in a natural way. Yeah, so I just, before the discussion session, yeah, I can maybe propose some solutions to the cosmological constant problems. I don't have them, but yeah, you certainly find some. So let's go to the next level. So um, we we have to we can build uh, this uh, we have we, we can build invariants 
uh, from the the usual objects yeah that you deal with gr yeah so you um, maybe i can actually uh, show them here so we have a match metric yeah so and then uh, from the metric you can build a christopher symbol which is doesn't have uh, good uh, uh, transformation properties yeah but then you you put another derivative and you take the, some magical combinations and then you get some objects that that transform nicely yeah, under gr, GR invariance and yeah, it's, uh, it's not important what it, what it is exactly it's important that this kind of object exists yeah so we can uh, we can uh, use them yeah, to build our invariants. And the simplest invariant yeah, is the, uh, that you can write here would be just R, so it's called Ricci scalar. Yeah, so this, uh, maybe I should have written it there, but Ricci scalar is G mu nu, R mu nu. Yeah? So this is some, you, you, you can see what it is. So, so the Christoffel symbol has one derivative and the Riemann tensor has two, two derivatives. So this is some, just two derivative term uh, that contains uh, the uh, metric, yeah. And then we have to. This has two derivatives, so it has dimension two. So we have to put dimension four, yeah. And uh, we have to put some scale, and this scale here is called m m Planck, yeah. And then I put uh, one over half, yeah, to have the, the usual uh, normalizations, yeah. And then I have to do. Maybe I, should, I can do it here, yeah. We also have to have this square root of minus g here, yeah, as, as, as usual. Uh, so, what is the the physics? Yeah, that uh, is contained in this term. And this term contains the, of course, the, the 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 usual Einsteinian general relativity. Yeah. So, Einsteinian general relativity. Yeah, it's uh, you don't have to uh, do some uh, falling elevators and stuff like this. Yeah. Uh, this is how you how you arrive at it. Yeah. So, this is the physical way of, of, of arriving at Einstein uh, general relativity yeah, to you uh, just write down an effective theory for this for this spin two particle and the lowest, oh, okay, forget about the cosmological constant, yeah, but almost the, the lowest, uh, um, lowest uh, uh, term, yeah, gives you all the dynamics, yeah, of GR, yeah, and every, all, everything that you, you learn, learn about, yeah, in the, so in particular, yeah, what you can do, you can put this um, expansion here, and then th that will give you some, so this, this will contain some sort of a terms like d mu h rho sigma squared. So this will contain two derivatives terms with two uh, h, with two graviton fields, and that are, these are kinetic terms for the graviton. Yeah? So um, maybe, again, let me, Instead of writing on the blackboard, yeah, because this is not important what it is, yeah, I will just uh, uh, show what it looks like, yeah, more, 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 more precisely, yeah. So this kind of kinetic term for the graviton looks like this, and it's this. This looks a bit random, yeah, but um, this is actually the form of the kinetic term that preserves this. Uh, uh, GR coordinate invariance that at this level, this linearized level, will act on on the h mu nu plus um, d mu delta nu plus d mu delta nu. So this is invariant under this gauge transformation. Yeah. So this is again just a, like gauge transformation for for a mu, just like gauge transformation for for the photon. This is just the this is the transformation that uh, makes sure yeah that uh, you uh, don't uh, have uh, uh, any non-physical degrees of freedom propagating. And, but this, uh, the curious thing about the gravity and the big difference yeah, between gravity yeah, and, the, um, and the electromagnetism is that the lowest order term is not just kinetic term, but in fact, yeah, if you, uh, it contains an infinite series of interaction terms also, starting with the cubic, quartic, uh, H to five, H to six. Yes, they are all. They always have two derivatives, and yeah, because that's what you have in the Riemann tensor. But then you have more, and if you expand, you have more and more things. Yeah. So in in particular, in particular, you will have um, uh, one over m Planck. Let me just write it like this: H cube delta squared. So you will have cubic two derivative terms, yeah, uh, from the interaction. And then, again, if you're interested how it looks like, yeah, so you can 
you can have a look. It doesn't doesn't matter, yeah, what it looks like. The only message here is that it looks scary, yeah. And this is not even all of it, yeah. This is just this is a cubic interaction term uh, in the gauge where uh, d rho h rho mu is equal to zero, yeah. So so it's it, it's a it's a simplified version, yeah, just uh, for the display purpose. Um, so this. Uh, uh, this is some this, this is something that looks extremely complicated yeah so that's why maybe you, you might think that uh, gr is some 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 complicated theory uh, but in fact these complications are mostly due to the fact that, that yeah that we are using this very redundant description with this lot of lot of uh, gauge symmetries so in the last lecture i will show you that if you forget about all this excess baggage and try to only use on shell um on shell on shell on shell language then this thing, this, this description simplifies immensely. Yeah? So the, the physics that is contained there is not so complicated. It's just, oh, it's just this formalism that is super complicated. But in principle, you can do, uh, you can do the, um, uh, the, the same thing what you did with uh, Euler-Heisenberg-Lagrangian or any other effective field theory with that. Yeah? So you can calculate Feynman rules and you can calculate uh, uh, Scattering amplitudes for the graviton with this Lagrangian uh, to any order uh, in, in perturbation theory and, and so on. Yeah, so there is uh, nothing really philosophically complicated. Yeah, with with with, with this, it's just uh, technically complicated. This this, this formalism of uh, Lagrangians and uh, and uh, gauge symmetry that is not really probably the best suited to, to describe. Uh, 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 graviton, yeah, so the, the degree of freedom. Okay, and then uh, you can go, but uh, is, apart from the, the this minimal term, yeah, you can go further and you can build a uh, higher order invariance, yeah. So next thing that you would like to write, yeah, in this Lagrangian is something like R squared, for example, yeah. So maybe let me go here. Let me try this. Uh, is equal to something like. R squared, yeah. So the, then there would be some uh, uh, Wilson, Wilson coefficient that is, in this case, is dimensionless because R has two derivatives, R squared has four derivatives. So it's uh, so this is uh, so. Uh, why I don't put this uh, term in the effective Lagrangian? The thing is that it's again, this is something that is redundant. That is that doesn't doesn't give you any contribution to to on short scattering amplitudes, and the, the reason is that. Um, you, you, the, the, the quickest way to, to check it, to, to, to see this is that this term gives you the equations of motion, which is r mu nu equals to zero. Now that's the Einstein equations in vacuum. So this term vanishes by equations of motion. So vanishing by equations of motion is the same as that uh, means the same that you can remove it by a change of variables, so you, you redefine your metric. There is a redefinition of the metric that will remove this term from the Lagrangian, just like we did with uh, this uh, certain uh, dimension six operator in the scalar EFT. Yeah? So that's, this, this, this thing is uh, removable. And by the same token, another term like this, r mu nu, r mu nu, that's also Removable, yeah, because it's proportional to the equation of motion. So remember, if something is proportional to the equation of motion at the lowest order, that means so equations of motion, yeah, it's a variation, yeah, of the Lagrangian, yeah, with respect to the field, basically. So it, if you can, so 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 it means that uh, the the lambda d equals two, yeah, is uh, delta g mu nu r mu nu, yeah. So then you can see that you can choose this delta g mu. So, so, so when you do the, the field redefinition, yeah, you can choose this delta g mu uh, accordingly yeah, to, to remove any, any of these terms. And then there is a third possibility that you could write. Yeah? So that's something like r mu nu rho sigma, r mu nu rho sigma. And that doesn't vanish by equations of motions. Yeah? So that's you, you would think you would like to keep. But then uh, again, maybe you should either you, you remember it from some somewhere from some uh, GR courses or not. But there is a the the, the, the combination R squared minus uh, four R mu nu R mu nu plus R mu nu alpha beta R mu nu alpha beta. This combination is called the uh, Gauss Bonnet terms, yeah, and uh, 
and this is a total derivative. So if it's total, because it's a total derivative, yeah, you can uh, trade this for the sum of this that don't do anything, and and the total derivative. Yeah. So this, this so so it happens. It's a, it's just a funny coincidence. Yeah, that for gr there is no like d equals four interaction terms that you can add, and the like the um, most the the leading uh, the leading uh, deformation of uh, pure gravity just happens to be at dimension six, yeah. And you can write the following: so, so you could write it in terms of the Armenu, uh in terms of the Riemann tensors, but uh, it's uh, uh, better to. Where is it? Oh, it's here. Yeah, this is. Uh, you, it's better to write it in terms of the so-called vile tensor, yeah, which is the, the same as Riemann tensor, but with all the traces removed, just to re again remove all this this redundant operators at the same uh, in the process, yeah, so that you, you make sure yeah, that you don't add any any of these redundant operators. So you could so the, you can show that yeah that the uh, the dimension six, the most general. Uh, Lagrangian is this C mu nu alpha beta plus C2 C mu nu alpha beta C mu nu alpha beta twiddle, where the twiddle, as usual, yeah, is uh, is this, yeah, so C twiddle mu nu alpha beta is epsilon uh, mu nu alpha beta C alpha beta. Yeah, so there's, you have this kind of you have these two kinds of uh, uh, terms yeah that you can add at dimension six. And this is the leading um, uh, this is the leading deformation of the uh, of the uh, of the, of the gr. Um, so so what 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 does it give you in terms of uh, physics? So for example, yeah, it gives you. New contributions to the cubic interactions, yeah. But you see that now um, are uh, sorry. I I wrote it long. Ago. Let's uh, see. Alpha beta. I I stopped too early. Sorry. C alpha beta rho sigma C rho sigma mu nu, and then the same like that. C mu nu alpha beta, C alpha beta, rho sigma, C rho sigma mu nu, sorry for that. Uh, whoops, and this. Okay, so now, now it's now, now it's a, a cubic dimension six interaction. So uh, this is like this is like Riemann tensor, so it's dimension two, so two, two, two is uh, six. So this Wilson coefficients, yeah, they have dimensions one over mass squared, right? So uh, uh, you have you, you can you can add this to the Lagrangian and what kind of physics they will give you? They will give you, for example, cubic interactions. Yeah, but now there is two derivatives from here, two derivatives from here, two derivatives from here. And so so this will be you will get something like one over M Planck to the cube. And Ci h cube and d6, so it's a six derivative cubic interaction, yeah, that you're adding to the to, to the. And so what what would be, so so this is uh, I could go on a bit a bit about it, like just like in the case of Euler Heisenberg, yeah, how you could actually uh, measure this this kind of uh, deformations. Um, the, for example, one way is to, to constrain those here yeah, from the gravitational wave, gravitational waves waveform. Yeah, they will affect yeah the shape yeah of the waveform yeah uh, emitted during uh, the uh, merger of two of two black holes. Yeah, so in principle, yeah, this is something this 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 kind of interactions yeah is something that is observable. Yeah, and then there is of course a lot of uh, a host of other GR tests yeah that you can try to use yeah to constrain uh, uh, this kind of uh, uh, interactions. The uh, so 
yeah, but uh, let me not, not go go into details. Let me just tell you one thing. So is, is this something that exists in nature? Yeah, so first, yeah, yes, yes. So GR by itself is not a correct quantum theory. And the reason is that yeah, you, when you go to a loop level, you will get divergences. And then this, you have to cancel the divergences by counter terms. Yeah, so I th uh, at uh, two loop level, you will get divergences yeah, that have to be canceled. Uh, by including this this kind of uh, um, this kind of dimension uh, uh, six dimension six interactions yeah so uh, gr if you if you just stop here in the lagrangian yeah this is a good fundamental description but this is not a good quantum theory because uh, uh, you it's not you you it's not uh, consistent in a sense that you need to add this higher order terms yeah to cancel the divergences that will appear at one loop. On the other hand, yeah, the whole, uh, the whole, this whole Lagrangian of GR Smith, yeah, is a perfectly sane quantum field theory, uh, at least, yeah, around the, the flat space. And as you heard in the morning, not uh, not only, yeah, you can do also uh, QFT yeah, in the in the curved space to some extent, but around the flat space is just the same as any other quantum theory. So next time, you, for example, you hear, yeah, that. Um, uh, Quantum mechanics and general relativity cannot be married. Yeah, that's uh, that's a sort of that's you know that it's a nonsense. Yeah, they are married perfectly here. They are, they are happily married. They they live happily ever. It, in fact, it's an effective field theory with probably the largest validity range in the of all effective theories we use in physics, because it is applicable. Yeah, on the scales uh, from very large scales. Yeah, let's say yeah, if, we, if we work around the flat space, so let's say this. Uh, scales of the clusters of galaxies where the curvature is not yet visible uh, down to possibly a Planck scales. Yeah, so it could, this, this are many, many, many orders of magnitude Yeah, where, where this EFT is valid, Yeah, much more than, than any other EFT that we use in nature. So it's a perfectly well-defined EFT uh, perf closed under a uh, renormalization group, yeah, the, the, all the quantum corrections can be absorbed in, in counter terms like anything, like, uh, in, uh, in a, like, like in any other quantum theory, yeah, and you know, it's, there is no really showstoppers of using it. The only problem yeah, with this theory is probably that it's very complex to do the calculations in this language, uh, but yeah, this, this can also be addressed yeah, by introducing a more suitable language for quantum calculations. Anyway, uh, maybe last thing that I wanted maybe to mention. Uh, so this kind of uh, this kind of things, yeah, they, they do exist uh, also in uh, probably they do exist in nature. Yeah. So for example, if you if you so imagine that uh, um, GR has some UV completion, uh, like string theory, yeah, this kind of this kind of uh, interactions will be generated. Yeah, and then the the scale that will appear here, yeah, will be this the string scale, which is probably something close. Uh, to, to, to the Planck scale. You can also get it from more mundane physics. Yeah? So for example, if there is some heavy matter fields, yeah, doesn't have to be strings, it can be just heavy matter. Yeah? It, you will, it will circulate in the loops yeah? if you integrate out these loops. Yeah? Though, so this is something like, like, like some, for example, scalar or fermion or whatever yeah? with, the, with the mass m, you will get this Wilson coefficients yeah? just by naive dimensional analysis, they will be suppressed by one over m squared, yeah, because that's the dimension of this coefficient. So uh, this again, this is something, yeah, that that to some extent, yeah, is is there in the physics description. Of course, nobody has ever seen this interaction, yeah, uh, the, the physical effects of these interactions, yeah, yeah. So it would be, uh, of course, wonderful, yeah, if we could one day uh, measure those. Yeah. It's probably more difficult yeah, than uh, than even for, for Euler Heisenberg. No, uh, no, that's a good point. Yeah, so I, I never, never, nobody ever said that parity is a good symmetry of uh, nature. So I don't know, but so we include also. Parity breaking terms, yes. Yeah? So just like we have them in the standard model, yeah. That is a good good observation. Yes, yeah? so this is not parity invariant. Yes, yeah? so that's uh, that 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 will give you uh, parity violation. So parity is a sort of accidental symmetry of GR, yeah, because yeah, the only term that you can write, yeah, then I mean you can define parity such that this is parity invariant. But 
only at the dimension equals six level, you will get uh, terms that, that violate parity. Yeah? And in principle, you should include them in your EFT. Two of what? Oh yeah, yeah. So, uh, so sorry. So yeah, with with uh, with the two, yeah, it's the same as as this. Yeah. So I was discussing R squared, R minio. Well, so if you if you just write two, you can. Uh huh. Oh, this is, yes, yeah. This is oh, sorry. That, that's that's redundant. Yeah, that's redundant because it's just very simple. Uh, identity with epsilons. Yeah, if you have two epsilons, you can rewrite them as uh, uh, multiplications of eta. Yeah, there would be a lot of cacophony of etas, but uh, yeah, but it, it is a very straightforward uh, calculations. Yeah, to rewrite it is just the same like f dual in in uh, Euler Heisenberg. Yeah, we haven't written f dual f dual squared. Yeah, because that is the same as f, f squared. Okay. Uh, are we doing okay? So, uh, another so, so let's go to another example of an EFT. Uh, let me write, uh, let, me, let me discuss now uh, the, uh, the Fermi theory. Um, so, um, Fermi theory is some sort of a poster boy of, a, of a EFTs, yeah, because it's something that you can very. Uh, uh, simply uh, explain and uh, something that has a that had a huge uh, phenomenological and also philosophical uh, um, impact yeah, on on uh, particle physics. So in the standard model, you have uh, this kind of uh, interaction. Yeah? Let's say let's write it like that: u bar sigma mu d plus uh, new bar, sigma bar mu e, plus Hermitian conjugate. Uh, now, uh, one thing, so I've, this is just the usual W boson interaction in the, in the standard model, and I wrote it using two component spinners, yeah? Is, is anyone op offended by two component spinners? So has anyone, uh, everybody is familiar with this kind of uh, notation? If not, yeah, I can I can uh, explain. Yeah, maybe maybe let me let me explain anyway. Yeah, so so uh, what I'm always working on everywhere, yeah, is uh, instead of the Dirac spinners, yeah, most of the time I will be using uh, two-component spinners. Yeah, so if you have something like uh, so, so we work with this kind of objects F alpha, where alpha is equal to one and two, and these are spinner spinner fields. Now. Uh, if you uh, uh, want to, if you want to uh, write down a Lorentz invariant made of these two component spinners, you can write it uh, like this, for example. Um, F1 beta F2 alpha this is equal to F1 times F2, yeah, and. Uh, this is also equal to F2 times F1. So you, you, you're getting one minus from the asymmetry of epsilon and one minus because these are anti-commuting variables like as usual yeah, in, uh, in QFT. Um, so, so these are, this, 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 this are quantum fields. Uh, then uh, you, you, you can have a spinner that is, um, transforms under conjugate uh, spinner lens representation. And this is usually denoted like that with, with the dot index. Uh, and you can do the same thing um, when you, but, and this is a Lorentz uh, invariant. You can also make, uh, take two spinners and make vector out of them. So one way is to do the following. Sigma bar mu alpha beta dot F2 beta dot. This kind of combination, so this is the usual sigma matrix. This bar means that uh, sigma bar of mu is one minus sigma, and sigma mu will be 
one sigma, and the sigma is the usual Pauli matrix. Yeah, so sigma zero with or without bar is just one, and sigma for the for the spatial components it's uh, either plus uh, sigma Pauli sigma or minus Pauli sigma. And okay, and this is uh, and another way you can write it uh, is is this f bar. Well, sorry, actually this should be without this, and then with f bar alpha sigma bar mu alpha dot beta f two beta. That also transforms like a vector, yeah, uh, as, a, as a Lorentz vector. Um, so now. Uh, and this is actually yeah, what I wrote here. So this is transforms as a vector, and I coupled it to to the W boson, yeah, who is also a vector. So now, if you don't like this notation, yeah, um, you can easily translate it to, to your favorite uh, Dirac notation. Yeah. So if you have a, let's say that this is a four-component Dirac fermion, this has a F bar uh, C. Alpha dot Dirac fermion is a collection yeah, of two two component fermions. Yeah? So this is a four component fermion. It contains two two component uh, fermions, and F bar Dirac bar, which is F dag dagger F dagger uh, gamma zero, is equal to F C F. F bar. So whenever you see uh, D like, or anyway, anyway, any letter um, without C, you just translate. Okay, it's uh, left uh, left uh, component of a Dirac uh, spinner. If you see something like E bar C, this is well, maybe I'll write it here. Yeah, so F bar C is the same as right-handed component, yeah, and F is the same as left-handed com component of a Dirac spinner, yeah? So, so you could write it in terms of a Dirac's spinners as uh, this would be U left bar gamma mu D left, yeah? And this relies on the fact, yeah, that uh, gamma mu in the Carroll representation is this. Okay, so end of the parenthesis. So I hope yeah, uh, uh, this will be not uh, too complicated. Yeah, but yeah, if you don't know two component notation, that's 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 no cool. Yeah, because that's like, uh, the most much the most fundamental way uh, to write down uh, uh, Lorentz invariant theories containing fermions. Um, good. Let's go back to the Fermi theory. So we can integrate out. Yeah, the uh, w boson. So, in principle, yeah, this this uh, interaction it contains uh, all the physics, for example, uh, related to beta decay. You can imagine that if a uh, if a no, uh, nucleus uh, decays uh, via disintegrates via via beta decay, you can imagine, yeah, that the quark one of the uh, uh, down quark, yeah, in this nucleus, yeah, turned into an up quark and emitted an electron and antineutrino. Uh, and uh, it's, uh, or rather, uh, D quark uh, turned into an up quark and emitted a W boson, and this W boson then disintegrated into a neutrino. But of course, this is not a good way from the EFT point of view to think about it, because W boson has a mass of 100 GV and beta decays, they happen at the scales that are much, much lower. Yeah, of, uh, so the typical momentum exchange in beta decay is with like one or 10 MeV. So it's a little bit awkward yeah, to use the degrees of freedom yeah, that are at 100 GeV. Yeah, and uh, it's not only awkward, but computationally very inefficient yeah, because then you will get all these logarithms yeah, of uh, MW yeah, over the small um, momentum exchange yeah, in, in beta decay. So the first step is to integrate out W boson. So you can imagine, yeah, so sorry, this, this contains, and then you have MW squared. You have a mass of the gauge boson. So you can write the uh, 
equation of motion for the W boson, it will be uh, equal to GL over two and W squared. And then the same thing, V U D U bar sigma bar mu D plus nu bar sigma bar mu E. And then we put back the solution, we put back this uh, solution back, back to, to the original Lagrangian. And when we do that, we'll get lambda EFT. I call it usually weak EFT, uh, when, we, we integrate, when W bosons are integrated out. Uh, um, so this will contain um, something like that, yeah? Minus GL squared over two and W squared. Uh, v u d u bar sigma bar mu d plus nu bar sigma bar mu e. Good. Oh, sorry. Uh, not, not the end yet. So this is, uh, we already went down yeah, below the, the weak scale. Yeah, we can uh, go down this second. Maybe we can rewrite this um, uh, so we will be interested yeah, in the interact for the Fermi theory. We're interested to, uh, about the interaction between the quarks and the, and the leptons. So we write it as minus two v u d over v squared uh, u bar sigma bar mu d. E bar sigma bar mu mu, where I just here I have written um, mw is equal to and that plus hc, mw squared is gl squared v squared over four. Okay, so we have the uh, like the effective interactions yeah between the uh, between, uh, between the uh, uh, quarks and, uh, and, and leptons. Uh, now, uh, let's try to see how this uh, relates yeah, to uh, beta decay processes. So, the simplest beta decay process is the neutron decay. So the neutron decays uh, to, to a proton, electron, and uh, antineutrino. So uh, how can we cal calculate this? Yeah, so the amplitude, so given this Lagrangian, yeah, so we can maybe, uh, again, we match this weak EFT to the standard model at the scale of NW, and then we run down to the scale as, as low as possible, so the, the the scales so for the order of the two GeV, but the running of this operator is not very substantial. Yeah, so this doesn't change really this, this discussion. Yeah, for some other operators, running might be important. Yeah, but for this particular one, uh, no. Uh, so, uh, so we imagine that we have a, this weak FT Lagrangian defined at the scale of two GeV. We cannot go any really lower. Yeah, because at some point, this uh, quarks will not be will not be a good degrees of freedom. So let's. Stop there, and we calculate the amplitude uh, m n goes to okay. Let's say that this is the amplitude for this process for the neutron decay, and uh, it will be given by d over v squared x e bar sigma bar mu y mu, and then matrix element of O bar sigma bar mu D between the neutron. So uh, now a little bit more so, so what are this, these things here? So these are the uh, two component spinor uh, polarization functions, yeah, for the, for the leptons that take part. So again, if you are used to uh, Dirac spinors, yeah. You can write that uh, this not the usual what you what you, what is usually um, uh, described as U and describes an incoming particle. This is in terms of two component spinors. You write it as x y bar, 
and what is usually uh, denoted as V and describes an outgoing uh, antiparticle is the same thing, but like this. But yeah, this doesn't really matter. Yeah, these are some, these this are uh, polarization functions. Yeah. So given this Lagrangian, yeah, we can calculate this leptonic part perturbatively, yeah, because leptons are perturbative, but we have this matrix element. So this is the matrix element of the quark operator between the neutron and proton states. Yeah, so neutron comes in, proton comes out. And uh, this, is, this is more problematic. Yeah, so uh, what can we do with it? We don't know it because it's, uh, uh, this involves some uh, non-perturbative uh, physics. So, but we can parameterize it some more generally. Okay, and we can do before we parameterize it, we can do one more thing. Uh, the, uh, this, uh, this, in this matrix element, neutron and proton, they have basically the same momentum. Where, where, when I say momentum, I always mean for momentum. Um, so uh, you, you could imagine yeah, that in the first approximation, yeah, when neutron decays at rest, proton doesn't move yeah, because they are much, much, much heavier than this particles involved and the, and the momentum exchange involved. So you can, uh, you can approximate it in the, uh, in the, you can use the zero recall approximation, assuming that the momentum of neutron and proton are the same. And then this matrix element cannot be, uh, cannot be uh, anything. Uh, there is very few objects yeah, that you can use to build this matrix element, uh, this will uh, the um, you can write it. It has to, you, so little group invariance. Yeah, will force you that this has to so this has to be a vector, and uh, you only have the momentum yeah, of the incoming uh, neutron, and. Uh, uh, you also have a spinner wave functions yeah, of the neutron and proton. So the most general thing you can write is this. Uh, X bar, big mama, uh, X. Sigma mu, y bar, proton, neutron, plus GA over two, the same thing about x and minus y p sigma mu y n bar. Okay, so uh, this is the most general thing that you can write. So this is in the when you uh, uh, in the limit where the neutron and proton have the same momentum. So in the zero recall limit, yeah, when the proton doesn't move anywhere and. Uh, uh, after decay, which is again, it's a good approximation, yeah, because the difference of the masses, yeah, of neut neutron and proton is order MeV, and that bar is barely enough, yeah, to give, to feel this, uh, to produce this rest mass of the electron, and then you have another uh, half, half, half uh, MeV, yeah, to, to give uh, kinetic energy to, to everyone else, yeah, so there is, uh, this, this proton really does, doesn't, doesn't move uh, in the first approximation. And so, the right hand side has to be a function yeah, of the of the uh, spin away functions yeah, for this uh, neutron and the proton. And I can take the two combinations. So this is like a vector and axial combination. If you write it down in in the language again of uh, uh, Dirac, yeah, that would be this, and this would be gamma five u. Yeah. So that would be a gamma gamma five combina gamma com vector combination. That would be axial uh, uh, combination. Uh, and that's that's all we can write, yeah. In the zero appro recall approximation, you can, for example, as a, as an exercise, sh show that if you try to write something like that, x bar p, x bar plus, uh, sorry, uh, x, okay, like this, y p, x p plus minus uh, y p. P bar, Y P bar. That would be another. That would be like a scalar contraction. Here you have a momentum of the incoming neutron. This is equivalent to this by using equations of motion. Yeah. So that's the most general. 
Okay, so now uh, you see that uh, we uh, uh, folded down, uh, folded all this uncertainty due to non-perturbative physics to these two non-perturbative coefficients. Yeah, so uh, what? Uh, um, so this is unknown. Yeah, this re uh, depends on this uh, QCD or uh, uh, Brown Mac, but. Uh, this is something that we can, in principle, measure from experiment. So now, the amplitude. So the amplitude is given by this expression with this uh, uh, matrix element, and and the same amplitude can be obtained. So. From the uh, nuclear, uh, from the nucleon level, t effective Lagrangian. So let me just write it like this. Uh, for me, it's uh, minus CV plus. Let me go back to the Dirac notation, yeah, which is uh, not too too bad here. Uh, a bar and sigma bar mu nu uh, plus. C A plus P gamma mu gamma five N uh, E bar sigma bar mu mu. So it's easy to see that this effective Lagrangian, which is not, doesn't use quarks anymore but uses nucleons, has gives you the same amplitude for the neutron decay as uh, the original quark level Lagrangian, yeah, with this parametrization. And this uh, so so or more precisely it gives you the same form of the amplitude and it gives you the same thing yeah if if you match cv is gv vud over v squared ca plus is equal to minus ga vud over v squared okay so what we have achieved yeah, here is, uh, so uh, this, this was pretty simple uh, combinations. I'm putting a little bit of, uh, par using a little bit of parametrization. But what we have achieved yeah, is uh, quite uh, remarkable because we matched uh, the quark level theory non-perturbatively to a nucleon level theory. Yeah? So we crossed this uh, magic non-perturbative boundary yeah, by using just uh, uh, simple EFT arguments, and now we have a theory that is already at the nucleon level, yeah, and we don't have to. We have new degrees of freedom. Uh, we don't have to worry, yeah, uh, about this non-perturbative physics, yeah, when we describe the uh, neutron uh, decay. And then from this Lagrangian, you can calculate everything about neutron decay, the uh, the the width, the differential distributions, yeah, a lot of lot of different observables. And uh, you can compare with experiment, and you can measure this, uh, this coefficients, and then you can uh, from this you can ex, um, extract yeah, the combinations yeah, of the quark level coefficients. Uh, so one more thing, this is actually a little bit better yeah, than what I explained. One thing that I would not explain is that you can show that this guy is actually equal to one to a very good approximation. So this uh, this this is called um, vector charge of the of the nucleon and it's one because of isospin symmetry so isospin is a good symmetry yeah, of this uh, of, of interactions here and the reason why this is is because this oper this this quark operator is a component of the isospin current which is approximately conserved so this is equal to one it's a it's a pretty simple uh, exercise to show that this is equal to one in the limit of isos uh, the isospin is exactly conserved there is something that is called ademolo gatto theorem uh, from six, the 60s yeah that uh, uh, actually shows that the corrections to gv equals one only happen at the second order in isospin so they are all only order 10 to minus four so so it's even better because there is only one unknown parameter in this matching. And this is the famous axial charge of the nucleon. This is something that you cannot find from the symmetry principles. You have to either measure in experiment, uh, uh, or you, um, you can calculate it on the lattice. So if you use the, the latter, the, I, didn't, I don't have the value here, or I don't see it, uh, but in case I have to take it from memory, yeah, but uh, yeah, it's uh, something of the order of uh, 1.3, yeah, with the 
current error from the lattice uh, that is uh, uh, order order one percent. So uh, so this is so the, all this all this non-perturbativeness. Yeah, is we managed to like put it into like a single uh, single non perturbative par parameter and then tell lattice people come uh, come and calculate it for me or uh, tell experimentalists measure it. Yeah, in, uh, for example by measuring the uh, beta polarization asymmetry of the neutron and uh, that's the uh, that's how you you uh, can deal yeah, with this non perturbative interaction and for example if we have from this lagrange and you have all, everything for example if you if you calculate dg over de yeah uh, from this lagrangian uh, you will get uh, uh, something that is like CV plus squared plus three CA plus squared. Remember, so some, there is some uh, prefactor, and then there is PE, e, 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 max minus EE e squared. So that is basically energy of the neutrino, which is the maximal uh, energy of the. Uh, electron minus uh, electron energy because the proton doesn't carry really any energy and uh, exceptionally this means yeah no kinetic energy like uh, uh, and uh, this is the, the sorry sorry no, no, this is uh, yeah, yeah. and this is the momentum of the of the of the neutrino uh, e squared minus I am in sorry, sorry, I mean this, uh, yeah, this is, so this is, this is the electron energy, this is the uh, cutoff of the electron energy, but, and the, this is the electron uh, momentum. So this is the, the spectrum, yeah, that Fermi uh, predicted in the 30s, yeah, and then he drew something, yeah, some, some few lines, yeah, on the, in the paper, and the, the, it looks more or less like the shape of what is what is observed yeah, in in beta decay, and yeah, that was that was the, the that was this amazing uh, success yeah of of Fermi. Uh, the uh, you can actually do much more yeah, with this effective Lagrangian because you don't uh, have to you don't uh, you don't have to be limited to studying these processes, but you can study any process where with any nuclei using this effective Lagrangian. Now instead of you, you, you will not be able again to calculate it perturbatively, but you can do like we did here. You can take a mat matrix element of the nucleon current between the nuclear states, and then again there is uh, symmetries will tell you that uh, uh, um, you can you can actually calculate the coefficient of the vector part, and then there will be something that for the axial part that is uh, not calculable. And everything that will change is that this three. We will become some unknown coefficient here, but but the shape of the spectrum will not change, and uh, in front of everything you will get some something that is called Fermi matrix element, uh, which is actually is calculable by symmetry arguments uh, just using the uh, isospin conser conservation. Yeah, so this uh, Fermi effective theory can be used uh, also for the sake of uh, calculating. Uh, um, beta decay, nuclear beta decay, so you can deal with very, very, very fairly complicated objects uh, and give the predictions, yeah, and uh, give the uh, give 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 the correct predictions about the spectrum and also about many many other observables that you can measure in this in this in this uh, beta decays. Yeah, so this is an extremely useful effective theory that has been used uh, for uh, at least uh, uh, in this. Uh, uh, in a slightly more general form, it has been used since uh, a, uh, the paper of Lee and, Lee and Yak in the in the fifties. Yeah, so so it's been uh, what uh, seventy five years. Yeah, that that this effective theory is still used to this, to describe the um, ongoing experiments. Yeah, in in uh, beta decay. Okay, so let me maybe make a break here. Yeah, and I will continue after the break. So let's say fifteen minutes. Yeah, and. Uh, so it's mid ten minutes past, and I will continue with the smith yeah, after the break. Hey, uh, 
Let's, uh, so re let's restart. Uh, uh, yeah, so there is a uh, uh, one more topic yeah, in, uh, in the notes yeah, which I, um, that they were sent to you. Uh, there uh, about color perturbation theory, which is another beautiful example yeah, of EFT and uh, uh, which also makes this crossing into the non-perturbative regime. And then uh, the new feature compared to Fermi theory is the extensive use of symmetries to understand the dynamics. Yeah, so I will not have time to, 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 to cover it. And anyway, I think uh, uh, in the literature, yeah, there's a lot of beautiful reviews of that. So you can look at uh, the Kaplan, David, David Kaplan lectures that I referred to in the, uh, yesterday, or for example, more, more recent Anson Hook uh, Tazi lectures. Yeah, the, there's a beautiful account yeah, of uh, car perturbation theory there. Yeah, so it's, uh, uh, there is, there, there, there's, uh, yeah, but yeah. So let me go to the next uh, example of EFT, yeah, which is uh, the SMEF. Yeah, and this is something yeah, that exists, yeah, I think since uh, 80s, yeah, as a, way to try to understand uh, physics beyond the standard model uh, bottom up. Yeah, initially this was some sort of a fringe activity yeah, because uh, there was no point to, to, to really do it yeah, because we, like in the 80s, yeah, everybody knew yeah, what is the physics beyond the standard model. It's uh, MSSM, yeah, it enters at the scale of uh, some 100 uh, GV. So there is not really a, a validity regime for for SMEF, yeah. So there was no point, no no point doing it, yeah. And of course, the, the, the so, so, so it's easy to understand why the popularity of this uh, approach uh, exploded in 2010, yeah. After LHC was switched on, and then there was this uh, big nada, yeah, in the, uh, in terms of uh, new physics, yeah. And now we we know this actually, or we strongly suspect yeah, that there is a large. Uh, uh, energy range, yeah, where this uh, uh, SMEF uh, well, SMEF, yeah, is the uh, correct uh, EFT of nature, yeah. So that's uh, that's why this 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 theory has uh, it's become so uh, important. So maybe uh, let me just uh, formulate. So what are the assumptions, yeah, behind it? So uh, I think there's two main assumptions, yeah, to, to that. To, uh, behind the statement, yeah, that SMEF is a good EFT. Uh, so, or maybe, go, let me go back, yeah. So what is the, what is SMEF, yeah? So uh, SMEF is an effective theory of the standard model degrees of freedom, yeah, with the standard model gauge symmetry. So in, in a sense, we assume that all these uh, particles of the standard model that we have discovered so far uh, are, this is all there is uh, at the electric scale and up to the scale maybe of a few TV and, uh, uh, this uh, and this uh, assumption, yeah, is that there is nothing else, yeah. We can call I can call it that there is a mass gap, yeah. And lambda is much bigger, yeah, than uh, and that, yeah. So lambda is the cutoff scale of the of the SMEF, so this, the scale where the SMEF uh, loses validity, yeah. And this is basically the the scale of the uh, of the new particles, the mass scale of the new particles uh, beyond the standard model. And as I was explaining, this is a very, this is, uh, a very reasonable assumption yeah, that all these uh, BSM particles yeah, are, uh, uh, are absent. But of course, it's not given. We have to remember that it's an assumption. For example, in SMEF, you assume that there is no right-handed neutrinos. Yeah? So that's because you work with the spectrum, with the, with the standard model spectrum when there's no right-handed neutrinos. Right-handed neutrinos could exist. Yeah, So there is nothing. Uh, Maybe enough, nothing uh, uh, wrong about it. It's just a non-minimal uh, possibility, and also, like from like naive uh, symmetry, uh, dimensional analysis argument, you would expect that if you have a singlet, yeah, you can write a mass for that, and this mass will be large. But of course, uh, dimensional analysis has failed us many times, yeah, and so it's uh, possible yeah, that there is uh, there could be other like degrees of freedom, yeah, that uh, that are coupled to the standard model. Yeah. For example, people look for invisible decays of the Higgs, yeah, and the limits are rather weak. So there could be some uh, dark uh, photons, any, 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 any other dark sector that is coupled uh, weakly to, to us and could affect the results of our experiment. And then SMEF is not valid. There is no uh, mass gap. Yeah, so uh, however, yeah, so th this is a very uh, reasonable assumption. And then there is a second assumption that uh, there is a 
uh, uh, SU3L times, S, sorry, SU3 color and also SU3L times U1 uh, hypercharge uh, gauge symmetry so that the interactions yeah, can be organized into, you know, a gate, uh, into an EFT expansion with every term that is uh, invariant under the full gauge symmetry. And this assumption is maybe a little bit less trivial. So why do we really, um, why do we uh, uh, insist yeah, on, the, uh, on the gauge symmetry? Yeah, so of course the gauge symmetry has worked very well for the standard model. Yeah, it was a very important organizing principle. Yeah, but we are looking for physics beyond the standard model. Uh, so why, 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 why we should uh, impose this gauge symmetry? So first maybe what, what is gauge symmetry for? Uh, Whenever we have a massless um, degrees of free, massless spin one degrees of freedom, like photon or uh, like, like photon or, or uh, gluon, yeah, is uh, whenever we have this kind of uh, uh, particle, we need gauge symmetry. Otherwise, we are not able to write down the interactions in a manifestly uh, Lorentz invariant way. Yeah, so that's something maybe if you want to read about it more, it's, uh, it's very nicely described in the QFT book of uh, Weinberg. Yeah, so with gauge symmetry is a sort of redundancy of the description, but this redundancy is uh, is necessary. Yeah, and the uh, the like the very hand waving reason is that if if you try you trying to describe um, a spin one particle with two polarization by a four component vector, so uh, you can decouple one component. Yeah, by uh, using a Lorentz invariance. Uh, uh, Lorentz invariant uh, 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 condition, like uh, or rather maybe like in terms of the polarization vector, yeah, you can you can write down a Lorentz invariant condition on the polarization vector, and that decouples one uh, polarization, but then there is another one that has to be decoupled, uh, and it's uh, uh, so the another component of of uh, of this epsilon vector has to be decoupled, and that for that you need uh, gauge symmetry. So we need at least yeah, uh, SU3 color times U1 electromagnetic gauge symmetry yeah, to organize our Lagrangian. And there is no way around it. But uh, Smeft insists more. Yeah? So can we have a theory with just, uh, of standard model degrees of freedom with this gauge symmetry? And uh, the, the answer is yes. Yeah? And uh, it even has a name called Heft. Yeah, and the difference between Heft and Smeft is here that uh, Heft has this smaller gauge symmetry. And so it has like less, it's less constraining uh, uh, about its interactions. Yeah? So in Heft, you, uh, you would have a, uh, you would, just like in carrier perturbation theory, yeah, you would introduce a uh, matrix uh, U, yeah, which has, uh, uh, contains the Goldston boson that will be eaten by the W boson, and then uh, this transforms yeah under um, non-linearly under SU to left uh, and U1, uh, and uh, you would have a H who is a, a singlet under the gauge transformations, yes, which so it doesn't transform at all, and then you build Lagrangian from that, and then there is a uh, there is a lot of uh, there is practical difference yeah between the heft and the SMEFT, uh, because for example, let me just give you a very simple example. Yeah? So if you're trying to write uh, interactions of uh, a Higgs doublet with, with gluons in the SMEFT, because of gauge symmetry, you have to add, you have to, uh, your interaction has to have it of this form, yeah, where this is Higgs doublet, yeah, is looks like this. So this, these are the Goldstone bosons, and uh, this is the, the Higgs uh, field, and this is the VEF, and the Higgs field is a, comp is, is a part of a doublet, so it transforms yeah, under the electric symmetry. So the only way to couple Higgs to two to, to gluons yeah, would be, uh, is, um, is, is via, directly coupled to Higgs to two gluons, is via this operator, and then when you plug in the VEF, yeah, you will get uh, in something like that, yeah, V, plus h squared over two CGG. So I, I plug in the VEF, I go to um, unitary gauge where Goldstones are zero, and then I have 
uh, this. And so I can write it down maybe more explicitly. G menu A, G menu A. And you see that the, the consequence that I was using ga gauge symmetry is that this two, the interaction of a single hex with two gluons, interaction of the double hex with the two gluons are correlated. Yeah, so there is, they are not, like the ratio of this two is not arbitrary, but is set by, you know, by this uh, scale V that, v that we know uh, the value of. Uh, on the other hand, if you do the same in heft, so that would be, that would be smeft. If you do the same thing in heft, you can write uh, g mu nu, g mu nu a, and that's invariant under SU3 as, as is usual, and then you can write uh, a1 h plus a2 h squared, uh, h over v, h squared over v squared. So you write your interaction yeah, as an expansion yeah, in h over v, and because this is a singlet, both of these terms yeah, are separately invariant yeah, under all, this, all the symmetries of the theories. Yeah, so in principle, the coefficients of these two are not uh, correlated. Yeah, so that's the practical difference. Yeah, because of, so the parameter space of, of heft is larger yeah, because you have uh, more, uh, yeah, so you have more, more freedom yeah, how to uh, write down interactions. And now the, so uh, what, uh, is there a question? Yeah. I will, I will actually comment on that. So for the SMEF, yeah, in principle, we don't know, yeah, any. And for the heft, I will, I will comment in a, in a, in a little while, yeah. Um, so, yeah, so, so there is a physical difference, yeah, that, is, that I will explain in a, in, a, in a second. So there is a, so there is a reason, yeah, to think, uh, so, okay, there is a way to think about it, yeah, about this dif difference, um, that uh, uh, it's to, to, to actually understand it, it's, it's worth switching uh, to, uh, gauge invariant description to fully gauge invariant description of this. So if we, uh, in principle, yeah, we can always go to unitary gauge and then we can write that uh, h is equal to square root of 2h dagger h uh, minus v. Yeah, that's the, that in the unitary gauge, that will be a that's the correct, uh, that's, 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 the, that's the correct equation. So you can rewrite this SMEFT, uh, um, this SMEFT expression, yeah, in the unitary gauge. And, and so that will be the first term would be um, A1 uh, square root of 2H dagger H over tau over V, uh, uh, plus a uh, constant term that is not relevant. And then there will be another term like that, uh, square root of two h dagger h minus v uh, squared times a2. Uh, so we'll have to take a square and then we'll have a1, sorry. Yeah, and then I, I think I lost, uh, I think I need to v squared uh, here. Um, so we will have uh, square root of 2 h dagger h over v a1 minus 2 a2. And then there will be something that is regular, yeah, 2 h dagger h over v squared a2. So you see that I can rewrite it in a very, this very, very weird way. Yeah, why would I, why, why would I do this uh, uh, in... In, in this way, but, uh, but uh, bear with me. So what I want to show is that uh, the heft Lagrangian, you can always uplift it, yeah, to include the full uh, SU3 cross SU2 cross U1 gauge symmetry uh, by doing this kind of uh, uh, substitution. The price you're paying is that in general, the Lagrangian that you get is non-analytic yeah, in, the, in the Higgs field. So that's something that you're probably not um, accustomed to see, yeah, so the, the, that's, uh, uh, the, there's of course reasons for that. So um, the only uh, 
way yeah to to to, to remove this analyticity is if a1 is equal to 2a2 and that's exactly here yeah, the case of smith yeah in the smith yeah you you go back here yeah, to analytic lagrange so you can uh, think about heft and smith either about the different gauge symmetry but gauge symmetry is always redundancy of the description yeah so it's not a, it's, they are not real symmetry so another way to think about the difference between smith and heft is that one uh, corresponds to analytic Lagrangian in the so you only use polynomials of uh, of of the fields and the other corresponds to a non-analytic Lagrangian yeah which you, where you can use where you can uh, also include uh, non-analytic expression in the field. So what happens if you uh, include a non-analytic expression in the uh, in the in the field is for example now. Uh, you see, I, 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 I put this equality in the uni, in unitary gauge, but now we can go back to the non-unitary gauge where you have the goldstones. And then this, this is no longer, um, this will be something like the, the square root of 2h dagger h will become a square root of h plus v plus goldstone z square, squared plus g plus g minus, something like that. Hmm? So you can expand it, yeah? Now you can pull out v and this will be uh, uh, times this, let me just write it as a square root of uh, uh, 2h over v plus h squared plus gz squared plus g plus g minus over v squared and then uh, then you expand it, oh, sorry, I forgot the first term, one plus, and then you expand it, yeah, in the fields, and then you are getting something like V, one plus two A, but H over V plus H squared plus GZ squared plus G plus G minus V squared squared, and so on. So this, you will get an infinite expansion, yeah, of this, of the square root. So you see that what you're getting here is you're getting um, interactions, yeah, that are suppressed by the scale V. So, secretly, heft contains like a higher order interaction suppressed, even if you don't, if you just write it like that, yeah, uh, you don't write this higher order interaction explicitly, secretly there will be higher order interactions um, that are suppressed only by the scale V, which means that the maximum validity scale of the, of the heft is 4 pi V. So, heft cannot be extended up to arbitrary high scales, unlike SMEFT. So this lack of the gauge symmetry physically means that uh, heft will, uh, the, in the, the amplitude calculated in heft will blow up at the scale of the order of 4 pi V, which is like a uh, few TV, and you cannot extend the, the theory uh, beyond that. And uh, so why is that? There is some, so again, you can, uh, you, um, you, so, so you can think about this, uh, the heft as a uh, effective description of a different class of EFTs, which are non-decoupling. So if you uh, have, if you integrate out a particle whose mass uh, is given by the by the by the uh, by, this, by by electric symmetry breaking, uh, that particle cannot be arbitrarily heavy, yeah, because uh, its mass is proportional to V times some coupling, and this coupling cannot be larger than 4 pi. So it means that you cannot, that this particle cannot be heavier than 4 pi, 4 pi V. And indeed, if you, in fact, if you, uh, okay, it's e easy to imagine, yeah? So, so there are, there are uh, new physics theories like that. For example, you can add the fourth uh, generations of, um, of, uh, uh, of standard model, of, of not standard model, but fourth generation of, of Carl fermions to the Lagrangian. Who get their mass from the uh, from the Higgs wave, and this was, used to be a very popular theory, but now it's excluded by the by the Higgs data. But in principle, yeah, this is a valid or possible UV completion, yeah, of, of of the standard model. It was a possible completion of the standard model, and in this case, yeah, uh, this fourth generation of fermions can be arbitrarily heavy. It's, a, it's an example of a non-decoupling uh, UV completion. Yeah, another. Well, maybe a simpler example is uh, you can, for example, write a Lagrangian like that. Um, oh, uh, minus k, 
phi dagger phi squared plus mu squared phi dagger phi dagger h plus. So, so we have a new physics uh, uh, particle that I call phi here with this kind of quartic interaction and this kind of mixing with the, with the Higgs. So this phi is, is also a doublet, yeah? so, that, so that I can write this kind of interaction. So uh, you see that if the Higgs wave is zero, this phi is massless, it doesn't have any mass term. That's, that, that's important in this example. But if Higgs wave is non zero, then this phi will mix with the Higgs and effectively will get uh, mass term. And then uh, if you integrate it out, you can show by that the EFT Lagrangian that you're getting is something, it's non analytic, yeah, it's something like this mu uh, two thirds, kappa one third, and h dagger h two thirds. This is a very, so, so you, again, you solve the equations of motion and you put it back into the, uh, uh, into the original Lagrange and this is what you find. So in general, non-analyticities non mean, in non-analytic expressions in, uh, in uh, Higgs uh, arise when you integrate some, some new physics that is non-decoupling, so that is that who, not that this new physics that doesn't have its own mass term, but takes the mass term from the Higgs wave and for this reason cannot be arbitrarily heavy. So bottom line is, yeah, that heft exists, it but it corresponds to a different class of uh, UV completions, to the non-decoupling UV completions. And when you, so when you commit to SMEFT, you sort of uh, uh, assume, yeah, that your UV completion, yeah, is, uh, is uh, uh, of the decoupling type, yeah, and that's the, uh, that's, that is the assumption that you're really making when you choose uh, to impose the comp complete uh, gauge symmetry on your, on, your, uh, on your Lagrange. Okay, so next, so let's build the Smith Lagrangian. Um, the, as usual, yeah, we write it as d equals four, d equals four, d equals five, plus d equals six, plus more. So, and so as usual, yeah, we will proceed, yeah, with uh, organizing the Lagrangian, yeah, in uh, uh, according to the canonical dimensions of the fields, yeah, with the lowest order terms judged to be the most uh, relevant ones at low energies and then the higher order corrections due to higher dimensional interactions. Uh, so, uh, we have to build this yeah, from the, let me, let me display it uh, here, yeah, so this, this is the spectrum of the standard model, yeah, so just maybe just to fix the notation. Uh, for the fermions, yeah, we have uh, each of these fermions, yeah, is the, uh, is the uh, th three column uh, vector, so it contains three generations of fermions. Yeah, but, uh, uh, that's, that's an additional complication, and then we have to build all possible um, uh, interactions at a given dimension yeah, from, from these fields. So uh, at dimension two, there's only one possibility. Yeah, we can write Higgs mass term. Yeah? And then if we do naive dimension analysis, yeah, this mass term should be multiplied by something that's of the order of the cutoff of the EFT. So it should, should be a, a lambda, eventually lambda uh, divided by um, by uh, four pi, but uh, of course, of course, we cannot do that. We know that this has to be of the order of hundred GeV. This this parameter because that's that's when the where the this this term induces electric symmetry breaking. So it, this cannot be much much larger than that unless there is some some tuning with different contributions. So this uh, this uh, we encounter again the hierarchy problem as the um, break down you know, the naive dimension analysis already in the first term, but that's life. You know, uh, uh, people have thought about hierarchy problem for, for the last uh, 40 years with no such success, so, so let me uh, not brood on, on that any further. And let's go to the next term. So at dimension three, then we have nothing. In the standard model, you cannot build a dimension three term from this spectrum. There's, it's not a law of nature. If we had right-handed neutrinos, yeah, we could write, uh, with the right-handed neutrinos, yeah, we could write, uh, uh, 
dimension three operator like that. Yeah, so that that's the, because fermions have dimension three half, so that has this has dimension three. So and we can we can do it here because the right-handed neutrinos are singlets. Uh, but yeah, uh, we don't have it uh, in in this uh, in this theory, so we, we don't have any dimension three operator. So then we move to uh, dimension uh, four, uh, and yeah, we can write it down. Uh, but anybody has a T-shirt? No, this this uh, yeah. Uh, let me let me just it's probably easier yeah to uh, to display it. Yeah. So, yeah, we have a uh, we have the uh, we have the kinetic terms for the gauge fields, which also contain interactions for the non for the SU two and SU three gauge fields. We have kinetic terms for the fermions. We have the kinetic terms uh, so, so for the left-handed fermions and for the right-handed fermions. And then we have Yukawa interactions. And then we have a kinetic term for the Higgs. And then we have a quartic interaction for the Higgs. And uh, we we have the the theta term. So this is all the terms here yeah, that we can write at uh, dimension four. So this is of course uh, together with this Higgs mass term. This is the standard model Lagrangian. And of course this is a uh, so here actually our dimension analysis is a great success. Yes. Yeah? So uh, for this for this term the dimension four almost every of these terms that that we wrote down. Has been seen. The, the effects of it have, have, have been seen uh, in nature. Have been experimentally observed. So uh, it looks like yeah, this expansion yeah is is onto something yeah because everything is uh, uh, that that you can write everything that's allowed by the symmetries is uh, is observed except of course for this uh, unlucky theta term yeah that um, uh, it's not there with the bound is like, uh, in this uh, in this normalization the bound on this theta is ten to minus twelve. Uh, uh, and if it was present, yeah, uh, it was larger, it would induce a large uh, electric dipole moment of the neutron. There's no anthropic reasons that we can find yeah, that this, this term is absent, really. So, yeah, it's, it, it's, we don't know what, what, why it's absent. It's, pre, it's likely yeah, that there are new degrees of freedom that uh, make this theta effectively a uh, dynamical field, like. like uh, uh, Axion does, but but we don't know for sure. Maybe it's just an accident uh, uh, that this theta is small. Or maybe we don't understand something about QCD, but that also doesn't seem to be uh, very likely. Yeah? So there is this one mystery, but otherwise it's a great success. Yeah, there is like uh, 18 independent parameters in this Lagrangian. Yeah, and this all 18 parameters have been measured. Yeah, uh, from experiment, and uh, it's uh, uh, so. Okay, so the d equals four in SMEF is a great success. So let's go to d equals five. And here the situation is uh, um, here the situation is simpler than at d equals four because we have only a single operator or uh, c. Um, you can write it like that. Uh, neutrino c. Okay, yes, neutrino L H C L H plus. Yeah. Where this is some symmetric matrix in the generation indices. So what you should read it is like that there is some generation index here. This is a matrix, a symmetric matrix. Yeah. So, so these are the dimension five terms, uh, which means that this C has a dimension of one over mass. Yeah. And this is like the leading this is the leading uh, deformation of the standard model that you can uh, write down. So uh, again, yeah, it's so this, this this term is one of many terms in uh, particle physics. Well, one of many interaction terms in particle physics is called the Weinberg term, and uh, Weinberg proposed this, yeah, in uh, some uh, uh, when was that in the about. Uh, uh, like late 70s or early 80s, yeah, I think. Uh, well, before the discovery of the neutrino mass, and the logic was uh, Weinberg was, of course, that yeah, uh, this is the this looks like a sensible organization yeah, of all this interaction. This is the, uh, the expansion dimensions, and the leading deformation is this. So you should see uh, neutrino masses, yeah, and uh, 
Uh, and then 20 years later, neutrino masses have been indeed uh, observed uh, and uh, validating this, this, this prediction of Weinberg. Um, so, uh, and this is, of course, so far on the only uh, the only one, or the only one of these dimensional terms that have been observed in nature. Yeah? So this logic, yeah. So this is a huge, huge uh, success of the Smith paradigm. It's not; it goes beyond the standard model because it also predicts that the leading order deformation should should, should appear at dimension five, and uh, that's the uh, uh, that's what has been seen in exactly in nature. We had a neutrino mass. Uh, so sorry, I probably haven't said yet. Yeah, Hopefully, this is pretty evident. So, left on doublets, yeah, they look like that. This is a new up and uh, epsilon down. And then, if you uh, if you uh, this is do the H SU two invariant contraction yeah, of the left on doublet and the Higgs doublet, this this uh, gives you as uh, v over square root of two uh, new tree. Okay, v, my V and my neutrino look, like, look the same. Sorry, but uh, uh, hopefully uh, you, you, you see what it is. So uh, after, uh, yeah, I can look at the nodes, yeah, and the nodes, yeah, they, they, they don't look the same. So this uh, dimension five term will give you uh, a neutrino masses. So you'll have V squared over two, the, the real V, and then neutrino J, C, J, K, neutrino, K. Uh, this will give you a, a neutrino mass of the Majorana Mar type. So now we can actually say something more because we measured these neutrino masses. We know that they are of the order of something like 0.1 electron volt. And so we know that this V squared, so the electronic scale, times this mass scale, uh, uh, that is, uh, well, let's, let's, let's write it as 1 over lambda. So this, times this mass scale has to be of the order of uh, electron volt, and we can solve it for the lambda. And then we find that uh, lambda is of the order of 10 to 15 GeV. So we found a new scale in nature, and it's a humongous scale. Yeah? So that's uh, uh, something that is uh, interesting. So from one point of view, it's fantastic, yeah, because it also validates the SNEFT approach. Yeah? If this, if the scale that is pertinent here to the SMEFT expansion is 10 to 15 GV, it's again, it's a fantastic EFT. You know, it's, a, it's perfectly, it's very, very well convergent yeah, at, at low energies. Uh, it's valid at, in the huge energy range, and it's uh, again pro probably equaled only by uh, uh, GR EFT or I mean, exceeded only by, by, by GR EFT. So that's fantastic news for SMEFT. Unfortunately, yeah, this is not so fantastic news for physicists, yeah, because especially for you, yeah. So, if the expansion scale of SMEFT is 10 to 15 GeV, it's probably think good to think yeah, about either more theoretical topics, yeah, of your uh, of your research, yeah, or yeah, maybe even uh, like, I know, artificial intelligence, yeah, or um, hedge funds, yeah, this kind of career opportunities, yeah. Uh, so, fortunately, it doesn't have to be so, it's because uh, the fact that this lambda is 10 to 15 GeV doesn't mean necessarily yeah, that the mass scale of physics is 10 to 15 GeV. Yeah? So, in particular models, yeah, this, if you, for example, if you write down a UV completion that generates this term, yeah, you will find something that this uh, uh, C will be of the order yeah, of some couplings. Let's call it white star, some Yukawa couplings, yeah, over the mass. So it could be that the mass is small, but the coupling is also small. Yeah, that's, that's one uh, possibility. Uh, it also might mean, it's also, it's, it also could mean that there is more than one scale in physics. Yeah, so that, that's also quite uh, log it's logically possible. Uh, it might mean that uh, the, uh, um, at, uh, uh, there is some other kinds of particles, yeah, that uh, generate uh, different operators that are suppressed by, by different scales, possibly lower than than to, than to fifteen. Uh, 
And uh, it makes it also makes it this, this is quite natural because this operator dimension five is quite special because it violates the lepton number. Yeah, lepton number is a um, accidental symmetry of the lower of the d equals two and equals four terms. Yeah, because you can just cannot write any interaction at this level that violates lepton number. The first interaction violating lepton numbers appears at d equals five. Uh, so, it, but it's possible yeah, that uh, you have new physics that is fair, that is much lighter than ten to fifteen GeV. But it doesn't violate also lepton number for accidental or for some more uh, deeper reasons. And then that your physics will not generate dimension five operators; it will generate other operators at higher dimension, but with a smaller scales. So uh, this operators, yeah, especially so in general, all the operators, yeah, at uh, the, at um, uh, all the dimension in SMEF, they violate B minus L, yeah. So they are they are uh, this. Uh, so D equals five, D equals seven, D equals nine. They are all the same in, the, in, that, in that they violate uh, B minus L. Good. Uh, so let's go to dimension six. Yeah, in the last uh, whatever few minutes. Uh, um, so what do we have at dimension six? Of course, at dimension six, all hell breaks loose. Yeah. So let me just write. Uh, a few examples, yeah, of kind of uh, new physics uh, you, you can get, yeah. So, um, for example, one example is the, is this h dagger h uh, to the power of p. This is a very interesting operator because it contributes to the Higgs potential. It changes the Higgs of the Higgs, it changes the shape of the Higgs potential. In particular, it will change the value, which will shift the value of the triple. Uh, Higgs couplings of the cubic Higgs coupling, yeah, to the from the standard prediction, yeah. So that's something that is uh, one of the holy grails now to uh, the, the LHC to measure the uh, cubic uh, Higgs interaction term in the Lagrangian, uh, and that that will probe this kind of interaction. So that's that's uh, one of one of many possibilities, yeah. But then you can add. Uh, instead, of, it's a little bit like you have it in our scalar example. You could have a, um, uh, you could have a phi to the sixth term, but you could also have write a phi squared uh, box uh, phi. So you can write something like that. A, Uh, so th this operator, for example, what it will contribute to the Higgs kinetic term. Yeah. So if you write down in terms of the Higgs field, yeah, it will you see that you will get uh, h box uh, h, uh, where now it is a little h. And if you get contribution to the ki ki kinetic term, uh, effectively, because you have to rescale back to the canonical normalization, it actually affects the, every Higgs uh, boson couplings uh, to, to to matter. So. When you measure the overall strengths of the Higgs at the LHC, yeah, you you're probing also uh, this operator. Uh, this this kind of operator corresponds to, this, to the famous T parameter of Pes Peskin and Takeuchi. Yeah? So uh, this uh, uh, this, uh, uh, this this gives you this gives you a T parameter, which in uh, in particular yeah, gives you the uh, changes the splitting uh, between the Z and W mass uh, away from the standard model prediction. And then there is a similar operator yeah, like this, H dagger sigma K H B mu mu K B mu mu. And this is the operator that gives you a contribution to the S parameter. So this, this gives you, uh, modifies the mixing between the Z boson and the photon. Uh, uh, and that, that is the that, that, that this is how uh, S parameter is defined. So these two operators affect electronic precision observables. Yes, yeah, so they are. Uh, yeah. Then you can have uh, the whole class of operators here yeah, that are already alluded to, something like that, something that uh, gives you, uh, modifies the Higgs couplings to gauge bosons. So for example, to, to W bosons, Z bosons, and, uh, uh, and gluons, and so on and so on. Um, uh, yet maybe, uh, let me add the yes, okay, so like that, plus, plus, plus. And then we can have uh, this kind of operator. C, epsilon, A, B, C, B, U, U, A, B, U, O, B, the 
W rho mu C, and that that is also a gauge invariant operator that corresponds to that, that modifies the triple um, triple uh, uh, gauge couplings yeah, between the two W bosons and uh, and one Z, and that, that was measured in uh, lab tools. So it is also kind of electronic precision observable, and so on and so on. So then you have uh, the same operator but with gluons, and then you have a bunch of uh, CP violating operators that give you CP violating couplings of the Higgs to the gate boson, and so on and so on. And of course, I, I'm not able to go through all this operators. I, what I just gave you is uh, uh, some bosonic operators, purely bosonic operators uh, um, in the uh, in the so-called uh, Warsaw basis. So uh, the base now the basis of dimension six operator is uh, is, hu is humongous. It has over three thousand operators, yeah. And uh, most of these complications it comes from the fact that you have this uh, uh, generation structure of the standard model. So you can uh, do a, put a lot of uh, different combinations yeah, with, diff with different uh, generation structure. This is what really uh, explodes the number of operators. So in par particular, when you go to four Fermi operators, yeah, you have four generation indices, yeah, and then so you have this very large tensor. So, but yeah, 3,000 operators, yeah, they, uh, they, uh, give, they basically uh, give you the, uh, they affect almost every aspect yeah, of precision physics. Yeah? So, so a lot of, lot of different kind of physics can be, uh, can be, um, can be uh, measured. And here's just an example yeah, of the scale of the operator that is probed by experiment. So the largest scale uh, is probed by, of course, by proton decay. Yeah? Proton decay, so there is a class of operators at dimension six which violate bari baryon number. So for example, you can write an operator like this. You, well, maybe I have it. Do I have it uh, here so that I don't write it uh, wrongly? So it's, uh, here. Mm -hmm. yeah, where it is, it's, yeah, something like this. So that's, uh, yeah, so, so these are right hand, two right handed up quarks, uh, one right handed down quark, one right handed electron, and uh, the uh, the, here, the colors are uh, contracted among these uh, three quarks, and then uh, the fermionic contractions, yeah, they are between these two. Uh, so this is an operator that violates baryon number, yeah, because quark transforms, yeah, under the baryon number, and there is nothing to, uh, to, 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 to counter it here. It also violates lepton number at the same time, so, so right. and it, it contributes to, to the proton decay, and the coefficients of this operator, the scale, yeah, is, uh, must be suppressed by something like 10 to, uh, also 10 to 5, 15 GeV, a little bit more than for uh, neutrinos, yeah? So this is, this is like the highest scale that we are probing, yeah, in, uh, in SMEF. But yeah, there is a lot of different uh, other, other experiments, yeah, that also probe uh, uh, the operators at very high scale. For example, electron EDM probes operators suppressed by EEV, yeah, which is uh, uh, 10 to 6 EV. Uh, searches for uh, uh, lepton number violating uh, the case like mu to e gamma, yeah, also uh, probe operators suppressed by more than PEV. Uh, K on mixing, yeah, so um, probe some set and four fermion operators uh, violating strangeness, yeah, suppressed by scales more than PEV. Neutral EDM also goes to PEV. Uh, B meson mixing, it's, uh, it's something like 100 TV. Uh, electron G minus two, yeah, and also uh, hundred uh, probes the scale of uh, so there is an operator that contributes to the electron dipole moment, and that probes the scale of uh, hundred TeV. Beta decay that I was talking about just now, yeah, is uh, something like ten TeV, and the Higgs uh, uh, Higgs measurements, Higgs decays, yeah, probe scales uh, closer to one TeV. Yeah. So there is a big range yeah, of scales that are being probed, yeah, but uh, yeah, so they're the most so from these pictures, yeah, it looks like the best uh, chance to find new physics yeah, is either you know, doing the neutrino uh, physics, but we already found it, or proton decay. Yeah? So proton decay, somehow there, there will be some progress yeah, due to hyper-candy experiments. So 
uh, let's hope yeah one day we'll we'll indeed find uh, another scale of uh, in physics yeah beyond that. so let me let me finish the, the uh, discussion of SMEF. Yeah, in this case. So just to to wrap up, yeah, I, I gave you like an overview of different EFTs that are uh, used in physics. Yeah, and they are good for many 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 different reasons. Yeah, either uh, simplicity. So it's always uh, it's a certain you 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 compared to the using the more complete theory. Yeah, you you're gaining on um, uh, you're gaining in simplicity. You have less degrees of freedom, but you're also gaining at the calculational level, because you don't encounter large logarithms yeah, in your perturbative expansion. Sometimes you don't know the UV completion, like in GR uh, uh, EFT or in SMEF, and then this is the way to actually build your theory bottom up, much like Fermi did yeah, in the, uh, with uh, his Fermi theory. There was first Fermi theory that was uh, an effective theory, and then from the structure of the, from the structure of the Fermi theory, the structure of the standard model was uh, uh, inferred. Uh, sometimes you, it also it allows you to deal with non-perturbative physics, again, like in the case of uh, Fermi theory. Uh, the, uh, also, uh, you can use uh, uh, another, another advantage is yeah, that you can use the, the symmetry sometimes to con you can, you can uh, recall, uh, reproduce or infer the low energy dynamics, yeah, uh, uh, just using the symmetries, yeah, of the, of, of the theory, yeah, without uh, uh, complications of strong interactions, yeah, and this is the case of the uh, carb perturbation theory, yeah. So there's wide range, yeah, of applications of, of, of EFTs, uh, and, uh, yeah, of course, yeah, this uh, two lectures yeah, are only scratching surface. surface. Uh, in the next three lectures, yeah, we, uh, maybe in, two, in the next two lectures, I will maybe Going again to something more 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 specific applications. One will be non-relativistic EFTs, yeah, and the second application will be uh, to uh, neutrino uh, oscillations. And then finally, uh, in the last lecture, yeah, so we'll move a little bit away from these applications and go back to uh, pure more purer theory to uh, to onshore methods. Thanks.